My name is JT, and this is a story about how I built my own bed. Hey guys, let me, let me see here. Oh, sorry. New camera, so I'm just trying to figure out like if it's recording or not. Anyways, uh, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of JT Time. JT here. Um, we got a, a good one for you today, hopefully. Uh, I'll be, I started pretty early today. I was probably at the house like at 5.30 and with the flashlight and everything, but it's daytime now as you can see. And um, let me kind of list off generally what I want to finish today. I may not finish it, I may finish it. We'll see what happens. But uh, exciting day nonetheless, just because uh, HVAC is scheduled for Monday. They're gonna be installing it and then we'll have the rough in for that on Wednesday. Man, the guys are, they're really chugging it out real quick so i'm happy about that because now i'm the bottleneck so i gotta finish as much as i can uh, to get the house ready for sheetrock um but uh you can see here i got the engine back out or the generator back out i'm trying to fix it right now um i'll break that down in a little bit so hopefully i get that worked out if i don't i have a backup plan i have a handsaw <laughs> I'm really hoping I don't have to use that, but just in case, I bought myself a handsaw. Um, it's kind of a fine finishing uh, handsaw, so it's going to be kind of rough to cut wood with it, but uh, it's what they had there, and it was a reasonable price for it. But let me give you an update on the garden. Um, the broccoli is doing well right now. These are broccoli sprouts right here. They're all more or less coming up. I'm slowly coming by every single time I'm here to, to start picking out the weeds so that the weeds don't go crazy in here. But for the most part, you can kind of see the general idea where my rows are at. This is one row right here, another row right there. Here's another one. And spacing on this is definitely not ideal. Um, they probably need to be spaced a little farther apart than this, but it's okay. I was just trying to use up all the seeds that I have because we have a lot of broccoli seeds. I'm not worried about running out by any means. Um, these are the uh, are the sprouts for the beets, uh, golden beets to be exact. Um, so so that's actually pretty cool that those came up uh, like I was hoping. Uh, they're definitely not spaced the best way they could be again, but I, I was just kind of throwing them down to be honest. Um, sloppy gardening, sloppy gardening. <laughs> but yeah, they're down. And another update on the honeydew. Um, that back one right there is definitely looking bigger. It, man, you know, these guys, I really don't know how to tell whether they're finished or not. I mean, like I said at the store, if it's kind of turning yellow and uh, away from the, the white color, then uh, you end up with, sorry, I'm trying to pull up this root right here. Uh, or not root, but weed. Um, then it's generally finished. I'm really hoping I don't lose those two. Those two are doing really, really well right now. Um, but I'm, I'm continuing to train the vine to go up the trellis, um, you know, the best I can. So, you know, these guys, every, every single time I come over, I try to wrap it back up here. And then usually I thread it back through just because if I don't do that, then it just ends up falling out pretty much. So let me grab this real quick. There we go. All right, so that's pretty good right there. Just to retrain it. And look, we have some new production. We got this guy right here. That looks pretty good. Um, anytime I see a melon that's just not looking that good, like this guy right here, you see how he's shriveled up? I just pick him off, do a little quick twist and drop because I mean there's so much production like each one of these flowers could essentially pollinate and you get a new melon anyways and those little guys just end up being suckers really so that's looking good those are looking good this is a good example of not being home and what happened uh, not being here and what could happen <laughs> this guy grew and he got wedged in between these little rails so I, I kicked him out and it's kind of deformed him permanently but we'll see if he recovers from that or not, he may not. It's it's okay if he doesn't. So that's a bad one. This is another bad one right here. I'm gonna take that one off as well. Oh, look at that little bee. Um, yeah, so so we're looking pretty good. We got four melons on this tre trellis now, or on this uh, on this um, honeydew vine. So I'm happy about that. Um, 
usually my best year I got like four melons off of one or two plants so um, if we can achieve that same number or a little bit better I'm happy I'm, I'm not pretty easy to satisfy pretty easy to 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 keep happy when it comes to gardening um, I'm not hardcore at it I would like to be um, but I just don't have time right now too many hobbies too many things too big of a house to try to build <laughs> um, but anyways so that's that's that I am gonna get out of here and let's start talking about this um, this four-stroke motor so uh, motors in general they're pretty I like to say they're pretty simple um, small motors if you're talking about cars it gets complicated because you got transmission you got all these other parts but in general uh, any kind of motor has only a few really key elements it has the fuel tank um, it has air supply and it has a spark to initiate it um, now timing and all that kind of stuff that's all stuff that you really don't mess with unless um, your your timing has gone off for some reason or one reason or another and in general um, if you can fix or confirm that your engine has those three parts fuel air and a spark you usually will figure out your problem so I use that same method to pretty much diagnose what's going on here so uh, let me kind of break it down of how I did that and in general you know this is a generator you could apply that same methodology to um, a uh, a weeder a lawnmower pretty much any kind of small um, lawn engine or any kind of small engine in general because most of those engines at the end of the day what they're doing is they're turning something and in this generator all it's really turning is the um, I don't know the actual technical name for it but it's this this little block right here and this block uh, essentially I believe is what actually converts the torque or the turning that's happening in this motor into power that can then power tools uh, so uh, this is a power stroke 3500 um, or power stroke I'm gonna call it 3500 because it runs at 3500 watts um, it's probably a power stroke the engine is 212 cc but in general I checked my fuel line so my fuel line is right underneath this guy right here this is like stupid <laughs> this part it's a it's poor design in my opinion because all it really does if you look over here on this side is it kind of it, it kind of bends this little uh cable and that's what quote unquote cuts off the gas from flowing into the uh, carb carburetor um so I just stop using that period and I just make sure that I clean the field. Now the one thing, the one mistake that I made here with this particular engine is that I was too optimistic and my wife will tell you that I'm always living in JT land and uh, and I, I turned it on knowing that my my generator had been sitting for probably three years without being turned on and what happens to gas when it sits there for that long is it actually uh, a gel actually pull, forms out of the gas and it puddles at the bottom and that that gel was actually in the carburetor so um, it's all pulled off right now this is where the carburetor sat right here and uh, and this is what that carburetor looks like uh, so it sits up like this. This is your how you control. This is how you control your airflow. Um, this is the natural airflow based on revs uh, going into where the spark plug is ultimately at. Uh, and this pipe right here, I believe, is where it actually sucks up gas, or or maybe somewhere in there in general, it sucks up gas. But your fuel line. Oop, oh dang. Okay, let me. I don't want to end up ruining this so let me go ahead and set the tripod and i'll explain a little bit a little bit more okay so um okay yeah that's yeah, that's right okay cool uh so the gas goes in here i'm just gonna leave this down so i don't lose that gas goes in here it goes through here and then in inside this little chamber right here and it comes out and there's a cap 
that goes underneath here. So this cap is more or less what holds the fuel. And right underneath there where you're seeing all that gunk build up, I don't know if y'all can see it, but inside here there was a bunch of like just a gel film that was just in there and it was dirty. It was really, really dirty. And there was a gel around here too. It was really nasty. I'm even surprised my lawnmower even, uh, not lawnmower, but my generator even started in general. Uh, I'm, I'm lucky that it started. Uh, but what you'd expect to see is this little guy right here um, allow fuel to come in because there's this floater that's here. And what it does is this floater pivots and all it really does is as the fuel fills up, <clears throat> you see, as the fuel fills up, this thing raises and it pretty much cuts off the gas going in here but when the fuel is low it lowers and that allows gas to come in slowly um, now I blew into this hole already and it doesn't it, there's no there's no continuation there's no flow which means it's blocked off so I confirmed that the line is flowing gas all the way to where it ties into here so I know that's not the problem I've con I've cleaned this out so I know that now it's getting clean gas and now I'm checking the, the, the gas flow to make sure it's actually flowing in here. Another way that, that I knew this was blocked was when I put this back together after I cleaned it, I tried to start it up and then when it, when it didn't start up, that told me that something was going on. In addition to that, when I snelled this little chamber right here, which is where uh, the air flow is coming in, there's usually a filter right here, it's on the floor, um, I I could not smell gas, which means that gas is not flowing. So what I did was I went out and bought some, this, they just call this gunk, small engine carbon choke cleaner. All it is is carburetor cleaner, nothing fancy. Um, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually spray this in here and I'm gonna hope that that kind of starts clearing out that gunk that's in there. So I'm gonna spray it in here. Okay, so what I noticed was the first spray, it just went everywhere. <laughs> uh, the second spray, it went in through here and it went out this hole, which means whatever was in there is now cleared out. So I'm pretty happy about that. I'm gonna let this kind of dry out a little bit. And uh, another way to confirm if you really wanted to, which I was doing earlier, is I was blowing through this port and it wouldn't go, it wouldn't go anywhere. So. I'm uh, I'm gonna go ahead and piece this all back together and pretty much uh, set it up again and fingers crossed hope that this thing starts up so let's uh, let's let's do that and you can kind of see me put it all together as we forward through the video essentially Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, I did check the spark plug and uh, all the spark plug is, is I pulled this out, unscrewed the spark plug, pulled it out and just checked to see if the clearance was good and if there was any gunk on the actual sparking mechanism and there wasn't. So I don't believe the spark plug's bad. It's very hard for these spark plugs to get bad anyways. The only way it really gets bad is if you really stick in some really crappy fuel, which I did for a little bit there. Um, but I didn't run the engine for long, so let's let's hope for the best, right? So I think, I think I'm all set. 
Let me try to start it up and see if it starts up. I got it started up, um, pretty happy about that. Pretty straightforward, a lot of these engines, they're built almost the same way. I've troubleshooted so many of these the exact same way that I, I pretty much explained. Um, they just check the fuel. Uh, sometimes these things have a fuel filter and the fuel filter gets clogged up, so you gotta replace that. Um, or you can just plumb it straight in. The only downside about doing that is you, you don't filter your fuel before that, right? Um, then you check your uh, if you if you confirm that you're getting fuel to your carburetor, uh, open up your carburetor and see if it's clean or not. Uh, clean that out. If uh, your carburetor's clean, it's still not turning on. Check your spark plug. You know, uh, a lot of times spark plugs cheap anyway, six seven dollars. Just go ahead and just buy a new spark plug for it and change that out too, even if it doesn't need to be changed out, right? But um, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and pack up my toolbox here with all my allen wrenches and stuff and I go ahead and uh, start up the generator and start working on the inside of the house all right so I'll see y'all in there real soon okay so we're back here on top of the attic I've already pre-sunk some nails that I want to nail in um, and I figured out already that I really would prefer the board right here so that's pretty good let me go ahead and nail this guy in real quick. Mm, that's a really awkward nail um, to hit in. I might actually hit it in from the bottom. I feel like that, that would be better. Let me see if I can get this or not. Be a lot easier with a nail gun. <sighs> okay. The main reason why I'm having a hard time with this is because this is blocking me right here. Could also be because I'm an amateur. <laughs> okay, all right, so this is mounted. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna do filter and then uh, filter and then right below it. Well, actually, no, probably filter and then above it, I'm gonna do the the motorized damper. And I did look that up. The motorized damper, uh, I can just tie right into the system. Really, it doesn't need to be mounted. It doesn't need to be supported as long as it. I think the code says it needs to be easily taken out and it's all in. Uh, not code, but the manufacturer recommendations. It needs to be easily taken out, installed in, and easy access to the electronics of it. So let me go ahead and get this stuff, and then I'll see you up here again, all right? So the factory setting is already set so that um, it's fully closed until you apply voltage to this, uh, I guess, pneumatic motor. And when, whenever you apply voltage to it, it actually opens it up. So this controls how it opens up. So this is fully open right here. And then coming back this way, this is fully closed. So I'm gonna leave it like that. It's already set up like that to begin with, so I'm happy with that. Um, the other manufacturer recommendation is to have this be very easily accessible, so I'm gonna leave it 
about right there. It's just sitting right on top of this right here, so I'm, I'm good with that. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this in with some straps. And then I'm gonna tape it up afterwards with, uh, with some duct tape. So duct as in D-U-C-T tape. <laughs> And then these clamps there, uh, there's this little guy right here that pretty much pulls it for you. And I believe if I remember correctly, this is, this is the part that pulls it. So you, you can kind of see it clamp there and then pull forward. Sorry that the video is kind of dark, guys. I guess I should go and get my headlight. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get that after this. Let's move this down a little bit because that's where the ring is at. Let's move this over here. Sorry. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Okay, right here. Probably be a good spot. Okay. So now I'm just gonna tighten this up. is not as tight as I would like it to be. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use tape. Okay. I think tape is the only way to get this sealed pretty much. which is fine, that's not a problem. Let me go ahead and get the tape and I'll be right back, guys. No, that's not gonna work. Nope, 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 nope. That's not gonna do it. All right. I didn't want to use mastic, but I'm gonna have to use mastic to seal this guy up. All right, third time's a charm, guys. Let me uh, let me go get some mastic, and I'm just gonna have to mastic this guy. Really, that's all I really can do. Kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to do that. All right, I'll be right back. One last time. All right, so only way I'm gonna be able to mount this guy is just to use these little metal tapping screws, which isn't isn't a problem. Just, I didn't think about it until now, so. All right, so it's all installed now. The filter's here, dampener's here, everything's set up for the dampener. The piping's plumbed from uh, the, the roof to this. Uh, and then the, uh, 
and then the electrical work we'll plug in afterwards. So we'll just do two prongs here. There's a converter that converts its AC to DC for this guy. And then that would just plug right into here pretty much. And every single time I turn on the kitchen fan, it's just going to open up this dampener as well uh, over here. And uh, that's pretty much how it works. So let's hope it works. <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll find out soon enough. Okay, so I installed this. Um, I do need to mastic this area. Dang, I didn't mastic this. Um, I need to mastic that, so I need to grab the mastic. Um, but taped up this, this is mastic. That's also zip tied. Then you go up, it's zip tied on top, and then it's also zip tied for the insulation as well. So, I mean, I'm pretty much done with this. Um, I still need to mastic this little portion right here to seal that, uh, make sure that's a clear air seal there. Um, but other than that, I'm done up here. I don't have anything else to do up here, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, after I mastic that, I'll head downstairs and start knocking out some of the downstairs scope. All right, so I'll see you down there. Okay, so I'm pretty much set up to uh, continue working on the fire blocking system. Man, my gloves have like a lot of dirt in them. I'm going to go get some new gloves. Um, but just to give you a quick summary, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to use my circular saw instead of my sawzall and just cutting the blades because the sawzall, I keep hitting the roof sheathing and it makes it hard because the minute it hits that roof sheathing, it really bends up that, that blade pretty badly. So I'm going to try to cut the middle of the, uh, of the block and hope that that um, gives enough weakness to the block that I can just break it in half and then I can just pull it out in two pieces. So let me give that a shot and uh, we'll see if it works or not. If it doesn't, then I'll just keep using the Sawzall. So I thought that was a good idea, but it's not. <laughs> uh, you know, I just give it a shot. It's not cutting in enough of the board. I'm gonna still try to knock this one out and see if it works. But I can already tell it's not it's not doing it. It's not doing a good job with this. So. Taking the hammer and breaking the board in half. I guess the board is old enough to where it just breaks in half if I give it enough force in the middle. Um, and then at that point, I can just take it out. So let me just turn off the generator so it's a little bit quieter and I'll just keep working through this, alright? Alright, so I kind of figured out the method to knock these guys out. Let me show you uh, now that I've had a few uh, under my belt, so to speak. something that is a little easier and I'm gonna go move you over to that room over there and we'll work through that. All right let me see if I can knock these out real quick.
Yeah, so uh, that's how I did it. I'm obviously breathing in dust, which is making me sneeze. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna just go ahead and keep going through the rest of the house and uh, I'll follow up you guys at the end of the video. I'll probably be working out here until maybe 11 o'clock, so about, I have about an hour or so here, okay? All right, so I'll see y'all real soon. All right, guys, so we're pretty much at the end of the video now. I uh, have knocked out a little bit more of the fire blocking that was installed. I finished off this room right here and I got the closet knocked out as well. Um, some of the blocks in the closet didn't come out. They just, but they opened up at least so the airflow can actually happen. And I'm, I'm happy with that. I didn't want to risk the chance of damaging the electrical cables or the piping that was there. So I just, it is what it is, it's fine. Um, I'll continue on next time here, uh, removing all the rest of the fire blocks. I did count them, there's like, 82 so it takes me anywhere from five to five to ten minutes for each one so let's say optimistic side five that's uh somewhere around 12 an hour uh so divide by 82 that's close to man that's gonna take me two days almost actually to, to finish this the fire blocking and then i gotta go back in and install the baffles afterwards which i'll show you all what that looks like once I started installing them. Those are easier. They're, they're just staples. Um, I'm not trying to hold them up with nails or anything like that. They're very, 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 very light. So they don't take much to kind of hold them in place. And it allows the air circulation, but also allows um, stuff from, or, or it blocks stuff from falling into the soffit. Um, so that's pretty much it for today. I kind of left a mess, um, but I'll pick it up next time I'm back here. And uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the episode. It was pretty interesting at the beginning, but kind of boring at the end there, just because just continuing on with what I've been doing. Um, but moving the needle forward as always. So uh, appreciate you guys watching again, and I'll see y'all real soon here on JT Time.